With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord's not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. And so Peter addresses, okay, what's taking God so long? And he, he, he talks about this question that theologians and physicists have had for you know, years, they've debated. And that is, how does God see time? How does God see time? And Peter reminds us that time to God is not what time is to us. God is outside of time and space. And this makes sense, right? Like he's always been, he always will be. So this is not a dimension that he he lives in, but it's an impossible, uh, it's an impossibility for us to understand time outside of our dimension. It's all we know, everything unfolds. When it comes to time, it's the only way we, we understand it. One thing leads to another. Time is always unfolding. God doesn't see time unfold. He sees it all at once. And because he sees it all at once, Peter uses an analogy to help it make some sense to us from our perspective and our dimension. And he says, "Eh, it's kind of like this. To God, a day is like a thousand years, a thousand years is like a day, kind of like that. And so he uses this figurative language, but I think it's making a, a, a literal point. It's literally true that God perceives time differently than we do. And to him, from where he sits, in light of eternity, Jesus rose from the dead a couple days ago. Now, some of you who are older can understand this dynamic. If, if you're 70, 80 years old, the way you see a week is different than the way an elementary school child sees a week. You know, like for you, at that age, you kind of look back, a day is like a week and a week is like a day. It just goes by so much more quickly. But when you're young, it doesn't seem that way. A week can seem like a really long time. And so you just carry that perspective out to this eternity um, idea. And you start to see that God God just approaches it differently than we do. And, And Peter says, here's why that's important. Verse nine, that God is patient with you. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So here's the point Peter makes. God is not slow. As some understand slowness, God is patient. God is patient with you. He's patient with you. Because he knows that your patience will, his patience will lead to repentance. Verse 15 says, bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Does this make sense? If God were slow, it would indict him as being indifferent or maybe apathetic to our lives and what's happening on earth. If someone is slow, meaning they're running late to a meeting with me, I might be tempted to think, well, the reason they're slow is because they don't care that much and this isn't important to them. God isn't slow, God is patient, and his patience reveals his love. And listen to me, like, it is not, it is not just church speak to say that that Jesus waits for you. And that's what Peter's getting at here, that he's waiting patiently because he knows the longer he waits, the more salvation comes. But there'll be a day when he waits no longer, verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief and the heavens will disappear with a roar and the elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. And Peter uses a metaphor here that's also used by Paul in Thessalonians and it's used by Jesus in Matthew 24. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. And so you need to be ready. You need to keep watch. Let's go back to Matthew 24 for a moment, right? Jesus on the Mount of Olives with his disciples, they say, hey, when's this gonna happen? You can tell us, how long do we have? And Jesus speaks of birth pains, things like earthquakes, famines, sickness, disease, wars, speaks of these birth pains. Again, as a father of four, you know, I know about birth, well, I don't really know anything about birth pains, but I, I know what it is to monitor birth pains. That's a fair way to say it. Like I, I have had that assignment four times, watch the birth pains. And when you're, you're watching for birth pains, there are two things you're paying attention to, intensity and frequency. Intensity and frequency. 
And, and so Jesus says, there'll be these birth pains, earthquakes, famine, sickness, disease. And, and so we lean in a little bit when we see headlines like natural disasters up 400% in two decades. That should cause us to keep watch, 